ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد Indeed, all praise and thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we seek His help, and we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides, then no one can misguide. And whomsoever Allah misguides, then no one can guide. I bear witness that nothing has a right to be worshipped except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is alone and He has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam May Allah raise his rank and grant him peace Is his slave and his messenger As for that which follows فَإِنَّ أَصْطَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ Indeed the most truthful speech is the speech of Allah, the Qur'an وَخَيْرَ الْهُدَى هُدَى مُحَمَّدٍ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The best and the finest of guidance Is the guidance of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَشَرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَتُهَا The worst of affairs are the newly invented matters. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ Every newly invented matter is an innovation in the religion. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ Every innovation is misguidance. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ And every misguidance is in the hellfire. عَنَ بِي مَدِينَةٍ الدارمي قال كان الرجلان من أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا التقيا لم يفترقا حتى يقرأ أحدهما على الآخر والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر It was narrated by Abu Madina الدارمي He said that there were two companions of the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم that when they would meet one another they would not separate until one of them recited to the other by time. Indeed, mankind is in a state of loss. Except for those who possess Iman and they do righteous deeds. And they encourage one another with the truth and they encourage one another with patience. ثُمَّ يُسَلِّمَ أَحَدُهُمَا عَلَى الْآخَرُ And then they would give the salam to one another. And this particular narration, it was authenticated by Al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala. And even though this surah, it is very short and it's very concise. It's a surah that is memorized by the vast majority of Muslims worldwide. However, the meanings contained in the surah are very comprehensive. So much so that a Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala said, لَوْ تَدَبَّرَ النَّاسُ هَذِي السُورَةِ لَكَفَتْهُمْ He said if the people were to truly ponder upon this surah and reflect upon this surah, then it would suffice them. And Allah Jalla wa Ala, He begins this surah by swearing by the time. And Allah Jalla wa Ala, He can swear by wherever He wants from the creation. Because He is the creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, it is not permissible for any person to, to swear by anything or anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ حَلَثَ بِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ كَفَرَ أَوْ أَشْرَكَ He said, whoever swears by other than Allah, then he has disbelieved or he has committed polytheism. Also another benefit that the scholars mention is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by something, then this indicate, it indicates and it shows the significance and the importance of that thing which he is swearing by. And likewise, it is a proof and it's an evidence of his lordship and his oneness subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Jalla wa Ala said, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ Indeed, mankind is in a state of loss. Meaning that all of humanity are in a state of loss except for those who possess four qualities. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except for those who possess Iman. And al Iman is not just a claim that a person makes. It is not just something that a person affirms in his heart. And this is why Al-Hasan al-Basri, he said, 
He said, Al Iman is not just an outward adornment and is not just hopeful wishing. He said, Rather, it is that which is firmly established in the heart and the actions bear witness to it or they confirm it. So it's not enough and it's not sufficient for a person to make a claim that he's a believer, to say that he has Iman in his heart. But rather, a person must also put forth the deeds. And this is why the scholars of Ahl Sunnah they say regarding Iman, bilisan. It is a statement upon the tongue. And it is a belief in the heart. And it is action upon the limbs. It increases with acts of obedience and it decreases with acts of disobedience. So the more that we fulfill the commandments and the more that we increase in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the more that our iman is going to increase. It's that simple. If we want our iman to increase, then we have to do those things that are legislated that are going to get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, when we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by committing sins, and we're negligent and heedless with regard to the commandments, then all of this is going to cause our iman to decrease. And it will distance us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah jalla wa ala said, وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And they do righteous deeds. And in order for a deed to be considered righteous, then it must fulfill two conditions. Al-Fudhayr ibn Uyyad rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, with regard to the statement of Allah, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا And it is he, meaning Allah, who has created life and death, so that he may test you and try you, to see which of you is best indeed. He said, He said regarding this verse, it means the most sincere and the most correct deed. فَقِيلَ يَا أَبَا عَلِي مَا أَخْلَصُهُ وَأَصْوَبُ So it was said to him, Abu Ali, what is the most sincere and the most correct deed? قَالَ إِنَّ الْعَمَلَ إِذَا كَانَ خَارِصًا وَلَمْ يَكُنْ صَوَابًا لَمْ يُقْبَلْ He said, if a deed is not done sincerely, if a deed is done sincerely, but is not done correctly, then it's not going to be accepted. وَإِذَا كَانَ صَوَابًا وَلَمْ يَكُنْ خَارِصًا لَمْ يُقْبَلْ And likewise, if a deed is done correctly, but is not done sincerely, then it's not going to be accepted. حَتَّى يَكُونَ خَالِصًا صَوَابًا Until that deed is done sincerely and is done correctly. وَالْخَالِصُ أَنْ يَكُونَ لِوَشِ اللَّهِ The deed that is, is sincere is that deed which is done for the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالصَّوَابُ أَنْ يَكُونَ مُتَّبِعًا فِيهِ الشَّرَعَ وَالسُنَّةِ And the deed that is done correctly is the deed that is done in accordance to the legislation and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Our praise and thanks belong to Allah, the Lord of the worlds وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ The good end is for those who possess piety وَلَا عُدْوَانَ إِلَّا عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ There is no transgression except against those who oppress وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَا I bear witness that nothing has a right to be worshipped except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's alone and He has no partners هُوَ وَلِيُّ الصَّالِحِينَ he aids and he supports those who are righteous. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَسَلَّمْ And I bear witness that Muhammad, may Allah raise his rank and grant him peace, is his slave and his messenger. أَمَّا بَعْدُ Allah Jalla wa ala said, وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ And they encourage one another with the truth. Meaning that they encourage one another. And they advise one another to adhere to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they encourage one another. And they advise one another to stay far away from the prohibitions. And all of this is commanding the good and forbidding the evil. Allah jalla wa ala, he said, praising the Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas. You are the best nation for the people. Ta'muruna bil ma'roof. Wa tanhawna anil munkar. وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ You command the good and you forbid the evil. And you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we see in this verse 
that Allah Jalla wa ala, He praises the Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of the, the reasons for this praise is due to the fact that the Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam command the good and they forbid the evil. They were given this virtue and this superiority over the other nations due to this characteristic. That they enjoin one another with that which is good and they forbid one another from that which is evil. And this shows us that it's not enough for a Muslim to only have concern when it comes to rectifying himself. It's not enough for a Muslim to have only concern, to only have concern when it comes to rectifying himself and his family. A Muslim must also have concern when it comes to rectifying those around him according to the best of his ability. This is what we find in the hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Man ra'a minkum munkara falyughayyirhu biyadin. Whoever from amongst you sees a vice, whoever from amongst you sees an evil taking place, then let him change it with his hand. And this is for those who have the authority. And if a person does not have the ability, because he does not have the authority, then he changes that evil with his tongue by speaking out against that evil. If a person does not have the ability to do those two previous things, then he does so with his heart. By hating that vice and that evil in his heart, and this is the weakest of Iman. As for the statement of Allah Jalla wa Ala, and they encourage one another with patience. And the scholars mention that patience is of three categories. The first is being patient upon the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the obedience of Allah can be difficult upon a person. It can be difficult upon the soul as well as the body. A person must have patience to perform the five daily prayers in the proper times. A person must have patience to fast the month of Ramadan and to perform Hajj and to pay the Zakat. And other than that, from the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Jalla wa Ala said, رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا فَاعْبُدْهُ وَاصْطَبِرْ لِعِبَادَتِهِ The Lord of the heavens and the earth and that which is between them. So worship Him alone and be consistent and be patient upon His worship. The second type of patience is being patient and staying away from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the soul, it naturally inclines towards evil and it causes a person to evil except for the one whom Allah has mercy upon. And this is why striving against one's soul and striving against one's evil desires and lusts is one of the greatest forms of jihad. It was stated by Al-Hassan al-Basri. He said, jihad hawa. He said the best form of jihad or one of the best forms of jihad is by going against one's desires and evil lusts. And know without a doubt that when we strive against our soul and when we strive to be patient for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah jalla wa ala will give us the patience. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ يُصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهِ Whoever strives to be patient, then Allah will give him the patience. As for the third type of patience, then it is, it is being patient with the painful decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being patient with hardships and calamities and trials and tribulations that come our way. And without a doubt, it can be very difficult to be patient, especially when going through a hardship or calamity. Patience is truly a virtue which many people do not possess. And this is why when we're going through a hardship or calamity, we have to adorn ourselves with patience. We have to strive to acclimate ourselves to being patient. Because when we do this, the end result and the final outcome is going to be praiseworthy. As it was said, patience is similar to its name. Patience is similar to its name. Its taste is bitter. However, its final result or its final outcome is sweeter than honey. We ask our Lord for the good of this life and the good of the hereafter and to save us from the punishment of the fire. Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. We ask Allah to give honor and nobility to Islam and the Muslims everywhere. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.